Hi, everyone. I'm James, the sonorous but disembodied voice that will lead you through this tutorial. I'm also the King Street Station Program Lead for the Seattle Office of Arts and Culture. And I'm here to present the tutorial for the call, the KSS uh, exhibitions and events that will be happening in 2025. Uh, hopefully that's why you're here too. Otherwise, let's get started, shall we? Okay. I would like to first acknowledge that KSS, King Street Station, is on the traditional land of the Coast Salish peoples. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the Coast Salish tribes past and present. This acknowledgement does not take the place of authentic relationships with indigenous communities, but serves as a first step in acknowledging history, recognizing the present and honoring the land we are on. Okay, today's agenda, we're gonna just do a brief overview of the King Street Station program an application overview and when we'll go over some frequently asked questions and I'll provide contact information at the end for you to uh, contact me with any follow-up questions you might have. Let's get this out of the way here. Okay. Just a quick background. King Street Station opened its doors in 2019 um, to Wonderful, wonderful uh, shows happening in that year, opening with you out, um, exhibition of 200 plus indigenous artists. Uh, and um, then we unfortunately had to shut down very quickly, as we all know what happened in 2020, um, forcing us to close our doors. Um, and hey, now we're now we're back up and running. So I uh, wanted to let you know that we had um, the King Street Station program opened um, in 2019 due to community feedback or with community feedback rather um, and uh, the community reported back the following areas that you see on your screen um, as the sort of cornerstones of import for what they wanted the King Street Station program to embody. Uh, the first was racial equity and inclusion and uh, the second was to strengthen Seattle's creative economy. There they wanted it to reflect, community wanted it to reflect, uh, art that reflects the city, rather. Um, so should it encompass uh, all all art forms uh, within the capacity and the means of the building and the program, um, and making exhibition space available to all levels of artists from emerging on up. And then uh, uh, have it be a place where community can connect, when community can come together. Um, Art that creates community and community through art um, and a uh, place to participate in civic life. So those were sort of the broad goals uh, of the program and continue to be. So with this call, again, it's a call for exhibitions and events. The question is, what types of proposals? Well, one of the wonder, wonders of the space is it's it's fairly flexible and as voiced by community and said before, the hope is uh, that it can welcome um, as many art forms as the space is capable of of, of welcoming. Um, you know, since it's opening, we have found there are some limitations to the space at present. Um, for example, um, to host, we do not have a commercial kitchen. So um, culinary events, um, thinking those through, in addition, the floor space there um, at present um, has some limitations on um, what kind of spills it can accept. So uh, with those limitations that have been discovered since the inception of the program, there are some some limitations around uh, culinary events. Um, and then uh, to add to that, we do not have a complete automated theater lighting grid. Um, the light, lighting in the space uh, is more gallery lighting centered at present. Um, and so there are some ways that artists who've hosted events um, with uh, that have hosted events and performances, I should say, in the space have gotten around that, um, but it's just something to consider in the space. Uh, in general, uh, it's not limited to visual arts. Uh, other than that, it's anything and everything that the community can imagine, and that's uh, sort of one of the wonders of the space, and um, 
is that we want it to be as flexible as possible uh, so that you can fill it with your ideas and great imagination and, and have as little limitation as possible. Uh, that said, in the application, the types of, of uh, things that you're able to apply to kind of fall into two camps, and that's an exhibition type event, which can range uh, typically from four to 12 weeks, or events, uh, events being something that happens one time, uh, a few hours on a particular day, uh, up to a few, three consecutive days. And then actually um, new to this form is the possibility to apply for a series. So that might be three uh, days that aren't consecutive, maybe three events that happen over the course of three months, um, you know, one, once a month. So another al alternative way to think about events. So who's eligible to apply? As an individual, if you are 15 years or older, you can apply. Uh, and if you are an artist uh, emerging or established or anywhere in between, as far as groups, uh, groups can be nonprofit, grassroots, or business organizations. They are seeking support for a project or an event involving arts and culture. They are not required to be dedicated to arts and culture in their mission. And they're not required to be 501c3 nonprofit or to have 501c3 nonprofit status. The requirements of the proposal is that it must take place in the main at Arts at King Street Station. So the majority of the programming will take place on the third floor of the King Street Station building where our cultural space is housed. That doesn't mean that there might not be um, a hybrid element to any programming. So something that does uh, move into the online space for outside access for those um, wishing alternative forms of accessibility, but that the event itself is housed um, during its duration in the main on the third floor at Arts at King Street Station. Um, that it aligns with our commitment to race and social justice, uh, that it has a significant arts and cultural component, that it's free, and this is kind of important because there are questions around um, can, can, can people charge for events, can they um, sell their work, and we'll get to some of that in a little bit, but the proposal must be free, all ages, and open to the public. And then the last one is that it has to take place during our our public hours in the gallery, and we're open Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And first Thursdays, every first Thursday of the month, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. We are not available to host events or exhibitions on Sundays uh, or Mondays. So then some of the things that you are, um, that make you ineligible. So your project cannot sell uh, materials directly or post prices in the gallery by law. We, we cannot do that uh, on city property and directly, uh, so we can't directly sell that. So one of the ways that we address that is that we provide contact information uh, of any artists for prospective buyers and the prospective buyers can then outside of city's property, off arts property, can contact the artist um, and make arrangements. And that has, that has worked in the past for us. Um, we cannot use ticket sales. So all programs, again, must be free of charge to the public. And as a program applying uh, or as an organization uh, artist, you cannot be a for-profit or commercially touring event. Okay. There's some questions that have come in around that, um, the funding questions, and uh, just to clarify how this breaks down. Uh, the funding proposals will receive in-kind support and or financial support in the following set of amounts. Now, in kind just means use of the gallery uh, with curatorial and communications support, so promotional support um, and, and installation and um, design support. Um, so what, those are in set amounts and um, you can receive in kind only, or if you receive funding, that also comes with curatorial and communications support. So if you were to be awarded uh, for an exhibition, a $2,500 uh, amount, that would be $2,500 on top of getting to use the space and getting curatorial support provided for, for free of charge and communication support provided free of charge. So neither the curatorial or communication support would come out of the $2,500 that you have been awarded. And then the following amounts apply for installations, 
uh, and uh, exhibitions, as you can see here, that's in kind only 500, 1,000, 2,500, 5,000, or 7,000. And for events, you can apply for in kind only 500, 1,000, 2,500, or 5,000. And just so you know, you may be offered a funding level different from your request. So while you may apply for, say, 5,000 for an event, after review, the advisors may suggest that you are awarded 2,500. Again, we cannot fund fundraising efforts, gifts, administrative costs not directly related to your proposal, uh, for-profit or touring events, exhibitions. And I should say we also cannot uh, uh, purchase, uh, we cannot fund the purchase of equipment that is not directly related specifically to uh, the work that you are currently doing uh, for the proposal. Okay, so application steps. Pretty straightforward slide here. The first thing, though, that may not be as intuitive is um, is a website called Submittable. And so that is what we're using for the KSS program and various other Office of Arts and Culture programs uh, for applications to, uh, as an application portal uh, for our grants, uh, some of our grants, I should say, uh, and uh, some of our programs. So uh, the first thing you're going to want to do if you haven't done so is you're going to want to create a submittable account. And I'll, I'll give you a brief uh, directive on how to, how to navigate to submittable, at least the way that makes uh, sense to me, I will say, um, because it goes through our web page, our arts web page, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. And the first thing we really inquire you to do, uh, inquire, not inquire, that we recommend there's the word I'm looking for, uh, that we recommend you do is go over the guidelines for the call. And that is just just really helpful, what we find, um, to answering a lot of questions you may have around what sort of what is required um, and how to, how to sort of navigate the application. And then uh, after you've done so, go ahead and log in and complete the application. And just so you know, there are supplemental materials provided with the application that we recommend you check out. The first being the facility info. That has a breakdown of our hours, uh, a lot of different questions about the facility itself, pictures, um, a floor plan, uh, our current equipment list that will be updated uh, as we get more equipment uh, in later in the year. And then a budget worksheet um, that just, if you have your own sort of budgeting process, totally fine to use that. The budget worksheet is just if, for example, you are um, new to the budgeting process as an emerging artist, it just gives you a little bit of uh, assistance and scaffolding to think about how, how what are the, what are the, um, what are the what are the things I need to think about when I budget for this show? And you'll notice on that budget worksheet that it has. Uh, like areas of the worksheet that don't actually directly apply to this exhibition or event application call, um, but just something you might take with you uh, as a tool thinking about future opportunities that might not provide the same sort of um, in-kind support that we do, um, such as security um, and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, uh, that's uh, I should add also with the supplemental materials, neither the facility info or the budget worksheet sheet are required as part of the application. So they're just completely and only for your use. You do not need to turn them in uh, as part of your application. So we don't need the budget breakdown as part of the application. Uh, that's just for your own use. We just have a rolling deadline as part of our application process, that's both for your sake and for our end capacity wise. So the call is at present open until the end of 2024. So you have till the end of 2024 to apply. Um, that said, we do have three cycle deadlines that we are following. So June 25th being the first, September 10th being the second, November 9th being the last of the year. So where, whenever you were viewing this video along the timeline of 2024, one of those dates will be nearest to you and that'll be the one you'll be applying to. Um, and again, the call and will be open in 2026. So if you miss the November 9th deadline, it will, it will be open again the following year. Um, but that said, if you don't make it up, so first of all, we, we really encourage you, if you're aiming for a deadline, say you're aiming for the June 25th uh, deadline, please, 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 I'm going to say please many times. Just multiply the number of pleases I say by 10. 
please, 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 uh, please get your uh, application in early, if at all possible. I know life is busy. I certainly get that. Life is really busy. There's a ton to juggle. Um, and it's just difficult sometimes until pressed by uh, that the the nearing deadline to to kind of put all the pieces together and really really push your application through. But what I really mean is, if it's June 25th at 4:59, um, a minute before the closing of the deadline, uh, it just it's it's it would be difficult um, in the best of circumstances to not feel panicked getting your application in at 4:59. But there also are those weird, crazy, unforeseen circumstances, tech glitches, um, issues that we on our end, unfortunately, can do very little bit, bit about. So I do feel badly for those people who say, hey, uh, I was trying to submit and it was, you know, 4.59 and my computer shut off. But I, I, I you know, I applied, I, I tried to apply. Um, can you still include it? And unfortunately, we, we cannot. The deadline is a firm one. So please do everything you can to get yours in well before the deadline, uh, trusting that I also, I deeply understand uh, deadline struggles. Uh, that said, with the rolling deadline, there is a benefit that if you do miss that June 25th one, for example, you will just be considered for the next cycle. So if at 5.05 .05 on June 25th, your application is finally submitted, okay, you missed the June 25th one, but uh, you'll be considered by the September 10th one. So there is a little bit of a, a, a back end to this that is um, somewhat somewhat more helpful. Um, as far as the application of the work samples that you will be submitting as part of the application, one of the pr unfortunate things due to our capacity is that unfortunately we cannot let you know whether or not you are your work sample um, has any sort of issues with it. Uh, we just, with the number of applications we're getting and our staffing, we just don't have the capacity to go through and check um, a, a well ahead of a deadline in order to notify you that, oh, actually, you should resubmit this work sample. So what will happen is that will be discovered in review, and we will notify you that, unfortunately, due to your work sample um, issues, Course, it will be worded better than this, <laughs> but uh, that unfortunately we were unable to review your application. Um, but then again, we will invite you to uh, re reply again for the next deadline. So um, that's just unfortunately due to capacity. Um, we wish we could. We wish we could do more, but that's the limit of what we're able to do at this time. So um, what I will do is when we get to looking at the submittable application itself, uh, I will. I will just quickly uh, advise you to pay attention to the different file formats that, uh, that the, the application accepts. As, part of, as far as the application materials that you'll be looking to submit, there are three broad categories, and we'll hop over to submittable after this slide, and we'll take a look at that. Uh, one is the narrative questions portion. Uh, the next would be the work samples, and the final would be the logistics questions. Um, Again, helpful documents that I mentioned uh, in earlier slides, such as the facility info document and also the budget worksheet will be found under the general information heading. Okay, let's hop on over to submittable and uh, we'll take a look at, let's take a look at this, shall we? Uh, okay, let me make sure that I am sharing the correct screen here. Okay, here we go. So uh, one way to get at the form uh, that you'll be looking for is to just go to your browser, check out Arts at King Street Station, type type Arts at King Street Station in. Now, if your browser uh, pulls up uh, Arts at King Street Station Amtrak, uh, that's not the right website. Now, um, we are good neighbors with our downstairs um, fellows, uh, Amtrak, wonderful, still operating train station that we get to be above. Um, as a train buff, I'm super excited about that, but unfortunately, not our website. We are Seattle.gov, Arts at King Street Station, dash arts. That's us. So go ahead and click there if you would. And then maybe your browser will take this long too. And that's okay. It's a little moment to pause. 
ah, a little moment. Oh, nope. Now we have to go again. That's it. That's that's the mar modern world. That's all the rest we get. Okay, great. So, um, unless we're in um, first of all, I'm not at all um, unintentionally scrolling up and down past our current show that's in the space. Um, let me do that again. That really feels um, this gives a great photo of uh, one glimpse of uh, the mobile walls we have in our space. Um, oh, and look, there's our there's our current show. That's that's beautiful. One more. Oh, great. Okay, so if you scroll down the page here, you will see that we have our call here. And maybe you've already been here. Maybe you've received a um, notification about this through a newsletter. Uh, maybe you heard about it through any one of the various ways you're connected to the Office of Arts and Culture. That's wonderful. Those are also wonderful opportunities um, to click on the links provided there. Uh, but here, if you if you lose your way and you need to remember, how do I how do I get there? Here uh, at the Arts of King Street Station website for the Office of Arts and Culture in Seattle is our our link all the way down here. If you scroll down a lot of the guidelines and you scroll down to application, application, and you click on apply on the online portal uh, of submittable, which I mentioned before. Uh, and that will pull you up to, not that. Oh, of course, it's behind me. <laughs> I'm really enjoying myself. This is great. Are we having fun? All right, here we go. Good. Now I need that to move. Okay, so. It'll look like this. I did it. I'm proud of myself. Okay, so um, it'll it'll pop you over to Submittable. Here we are, SeattleArts.Submittable.com/slash/submit. And down here, we've got we've got some cool information you might want to check out about the Office of Arts and Culture. Gives you a little advice on registering. I did that out of order. Sorry, sorry about that. For those of you who are more linear than my brain. Um, yeah, here's some here's some application information, and here's all sorts of cool opportunities you might check out other than King Street. Obviously, it's King Street Station, which is amazing. There's our links in Hughes Performing Arts Institute. There's Creative Advantage. Lots of cool opportunities. Uh, draw your attention here to privacy notice for the privacy buffs out there. That should be all of us, I'm assuming, um, given our our modern lives. Yeah, we'd like to give you all the information we can about how we handle your information privacy, etc. Provide a link to follow up on any more details you might need. And then you're going to scroll down here to, look at that, we've got two calls open right now. Top one, Arts of King Station call for exhibitions and events. Now, if you haven't signed up for a an account, you're going to uh, come to, uh, okay, I'm having cursor, cursor difficulties. This is This is fun. You know what? It's all part of all part of life. Here we go. Yes. Okay. That that that'll do. Okay. So uh, arts at King Street Station. Um, I mean, pardon me. <laughs> arts and Culture Seattle. Uh, you'll you'll click on the application uh, apply or the guidelines. Anyway, it'll take you here. This is what it'll look like. And this is where if you have an account already, you get a chance to sign on in. But if not, you'll go to the sign up. Uh, it's already got me filled in because I've already filled it in and it wants to help me. Thank you, uh, Modern Tech. I appreciate it. But, you know, you'll have to go in and fill in and then it'll do it for you. Uh, once you've done that, um, you'll be able to sign in and that'll be that'll be great. I'm going to move this out of the way awkwardly, um, but let's pretend that it wasn't awkward. Great. Uh, totally fine. Everything's great. Anyway, I've signed in now because I filled out everything I've signed in. Um, I feel like it's kind of a bit like a cooking show, right? I, I show you the thing going into the oven, and then we cut, and then here we are. Everything's baked. It looks beautiful, and we are in the application. Okay. Now that we're in the application, you'll see you'll see a link to the application. No, anyway, you'll see an over an uh, um, overview of the the stuff, the information that you need to know about the the event, the call. Uh, what have you? Uh, it just basically gives you more detailed information about our guidelines than, than what you saw at the Arts of King Street Station website, and uh, more information about the due date, el eligibility, which is some of the stuff I've talked about. So all good stuff to just kind of familiarize yourself with. Just you know, you don't have to learn it by heart because we do provide it to you, but you know, just you know, so you feel confident walking through this application. Uh, Again, sort of some of the things we talked about in the slides. Um, and just so you know, uh, your application, I'm going to go over this again in our slides as well, but your proposal may be accepted. It may be accepted with suggested modifications. 
It may be grouped or combined with uh, other proposals, and it may be declined. Okay. Again, they'll give you the breakdown of future workshops that you might want to attend if you want to ask me more questions than I address in the frequently asked questions here on this tutorial. And then we've got our evaluation criteria, which uh, you can go over in depth here. I have slides on that as well, um, but this is the more in-depth version. So the broad category is alignment with our mission, its public benefit, its arts and cultural contrib contribution, its viability, how feasible is it in our space, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and just so you know, uh, the selection process uh, we use is that we have an amazing board of community advisors um, representing a broad spectrum of our our, our region, our, our city, um, uh, and our disciplines and backgrounds. Um, and they are responsible for ensuring the program uh, programming uh, at Arts and at King Street Station um, centers racial equity, represents and welcomes diverse communities, and showcases many different creative disciplines. So. Uh, advisors, they will both evaluate your work on its merits, but they also have to take into consideration um, the broad spectrum of arts that we are, um, that, that we would like to welcome in the space um, and the many representations we are looking to fulfill the mission of the space. That said, um, uh, along those lines, uh, I encourage you to, to reapply. At F. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Um, Okay, application tips. Uh, again, reviewing the, the guidelines is key, uh, especially the evaluation criteria and just making sure that you check your eligibility, you read all the instructions, you look over the evaluation criteria as a means of really targeting your proposal to answer as many of those questions or uh, criteria as possible. Uh, again, encouraging you to review the facility information when you're thinking about what you would like to propose, uh, how much space you would like to have in the gallery. Again, it's, it's approximately 7,500 square foot. I believe the actual amount is 7,800 square feet, so closer in that area. Uh, that's a lot of space. Uh, so uh, thinking about you know how much of the space that you you would like to propose uh, uh, for your for your your event or your exhibition, and um, yeah. That's all I'll say about that for now. I'll have more on that later. Okay, so uh, narrative questions um, and start, and we'll, we'll, we can go over a little bit of those here. Um, again, you'll go over these if you're working um, on the application, but the main thing I really want to point out here is that uh, narrative questions can be submitted either in written or audio video formats. So you have two options. If you prefer your communication style is to write, um, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, if you are uh, someone who prefers to be to record yourself speaking, either in video format or audio format, that's another opportunity that this application allows for. If that's how you feel you would better represent yourself, totally great. Uh, the only thing we ask as far as the audio video component is that you don't need it to, it doesn't need to be super high production values. We're really just looking for a straightforward opportunity for you to just speak to speak to your who you are and etc cetera, etc cetera, all the all the questions that are asked so um, we're not really looking for something highly produced it shouldn't shouldn't be that um, okay um, and so the general uh, things that we'll go over about the narrative questions um, can see kind of right here the first narrative question who are you who are your communities what excites influences encourages or sustains your practice if your background informs your creative practice share how one question someone had um, in a previous workshop is: Does if we're applying as a group, are you should we uh, answer this question as a as a as a group or as individuals in the group? Um, and I think the word the word limit is sort of the guide here in that if you're applying as a group, uh, probably the best option would be for you to to answer as a group and to the best of your abilities. Can you can you sum up uh, what sort of your your group communities are, who you are as a group, um, the things that ex excite you? So I hope that's helpful. I hope that's a helpful answer. Um, and then one of the things you'll notice about this application is that it, it kind of directs you in two directions, right? It asks you whether you are applying for an exhibition or an event. Now, what if you have an exhibition that is part of it has events? 
Well, you'll look down here and you'll see if you're proposing an exhibition that includes an event during its run, such as a panel discussion, celebration, performance, a screening, etc., you should select the exhibition option and then include information about the complementary event or events in your project description. So again, this kind of goes over exhibitions. Uh, they're scheduled to run, proposed to run four to 12 weeks, depending on the scale of the project. Again, uh, that also under advisement with the advisors is at the final discretion of the uh, of the Office of Arts and Culture. So for example, you may say, I'm proposing a 12, 12 week event uh, or rather exhibition. And if your proposal is accepted with modifications, it might say, we love your event, wonderful. We can only give you eight weeks. Okay, so, uh, and again, that's all the advisors factoring and all the different applications we're having and um, and how they might fit together and, and et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's lots of factors going into that. Um, and so about our space, the 7,500, um, nay, 7,800 square feet uh, is a large space, as we said before. In general, we are, we do not usually give one proposal the entire space. We're generally looking at a quarter, a third, a half of that gallery space for promotion um, or for, for um, proposals rather. And so that's sort of the, that's sort of the limit um, with rare exception. That doesn't mean if you have an absolutely brilliant idea for a complete and total gallery uh, use that um, you can't apply as that and say, this is, this is really the full thing. Just noting that the advisors may, may again come back and say, Wonderful idea. Unfortunately, uh, half the gallery is what we can is what we can give to you. Um, so I think just be prepared for that if you're proposing a full gallery exhibition. Um, but again, if if your ultimate vision is a full gallery exhibition, don't be shy about that. Feel free to feel free to apply as such. Just note that um, yeah, that the limitations uh, will be will be noted there. So. Um, Okay, uh, as far as the exhibition layout, again, that has to be in coordination with uh, to staff uh, and then advisor panelist recommendation. And then final, our uh, Office of Arts and Culture reserves the final right of approval. Again, we're considering uh, potentially, you know, your application you know, with other applications and how our exhibitions might run uh, together in space. So uh, again, the layout is contingent on, on, on many factors. Um, and we, we reserve the call, uh, the final right of approval. In general, we like to really be collaborative with artists. Uh, we like to accommodate visions of our artists who have a strong vision as much as possible. So it's not to say that we will that we will necessarily um, differ in our in, in our visions, but um, just in the end that we have to we have to think about accommodating um, the vast the vast community that uh, is participating in this space. So. And then as far as the number of um, people per exhibition, uh, the best the best um, number, I think the sort of the max, the number where we start to max out capacity wise on our end is if you have 10 artists or ex exhibitors as part of your thing, any larger than that, and we're looking at a different ask and it's not something that we can regularly support. Um, that's not to say in the future, we won't be looking to host larger events, but for the purpose of this call right now, sort of that's, that's sort of the capacity limitation that we're, we're looking at uh, at the moment. Um, okay, um, that's what I want to talk about there. I think um, for events, yeah. Uh, again, here events just they need to take place during Arts at King Street public hours. Um, again, 11 to 5, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday, except for every first Thursday of the month, at which point we are open 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and um, yeah, that tells you a little bit about how you might apply. And again, just to that um, point of events, I just want to remind you, yes, you might be proposing events that run consecutive days, or you might be proposing events that take place over the course of several months, right? Every, every second Saturday of the month for four months. Um, I invite you to go ahead when you're applying to just kind of look through all of the the different requirements for the narrative questions, um, work samples. This one is a bit um, detailed here as far as how we look at your work samples that you will be submitting. And again, uh, you'll note that the 
um, we, we take about five minutes. Just the number of applications um, that we, we get, it's, it's about five, five minutes is what we have um, to, to look at your materials. So just sort of being very curatorial about how you want to break that down it's it's five, it's going to be five minutes. So if you give us something that's ten minutes, unfortunately, as much as we would love to have the time to look over the full ten minutes, our panelists can only look at the first five minutes, right? Um, and so if there's something that you give us that is seventeen minutes long, and you want to have us look at uh, a particular portion of it you should be very specific in your descriptions of where you want us to start and stop. Um, that's going to be the best option. Again, looking at the different formats, how it kind of breaks down. If you're looking at doing multi uh, format examples of how you want to display your work. And one of the questions is, should this be work that's going to go in the show? It doesn't have to be work that's going in the show. It's just an example to show us examples of your work. Um, and it doesn't have to be professional. It doesn't have to be super professional. Um, you know, like it doesn't have to be professionally photographed or anything like that. We just want, uh, as you can see here, images, audio, video, or text from your smartphone or social media are sufficient. Um, again, we're not. We're not. Um, in, you can include finished work or work in progress. It doesn't necessarily have to be work that would go in the show. And then if you are submitting a website, take a look here at how we kind of break down the timing example. So uh, if you uh, look at five pages of materials equals five minutes, you know, we just kind of break the math down. It's 500 words is roughly equivalent to one page. So uh, like one page of reading time again. So 2,500 2, words equals five minutes on, on your website. All right, um, okay. Let's skip down here to sort of uh, the logistics questions overview. What are your creative, what's your um, proposal's creative medium or mediums? Um, what are the tech requirements around what your proposal is offering? Um, how many participants? Um, and then sort of what, what kind of budget are you asking for? And again, uh, we provide a budget worksheet to help you gauge your costs. Um, and then just, this is important to kind of check out obligation of award recipients. Here are some of the things that you will need to make sure that you know when you are rewarded. These are not things that you have to have um, necessarily lined up right as you apply, but if you are chosen, you will need to have um, all this information for us, right? Um, if you have questions about these things, um, we do our best to support helping you understand um, what's required. Uh, for example, you will be required to sign a contract uh, with us, um, and you'll have to provide a preliminary project proposal. Um, you'll be responsible for paying all applicable taxes, and you have to commit to recognizing the Seattle Office of Arts and Culture in your press releases, and you'll be working with our comms team to sort of figure out our guidelines around all of that. Okay, I want to skip down just for time's sake. I welcome you to read everything else uh, that's part of this uh, application uh, when you can. But here we are in general information. We're finally getting into the document, or the rather the application uh, portion of the of the <laughs> of the of the portal, and uh, giving more again general information. But remember, I talked about those helpful documents, right? So the guidelines, facility information budget worksheet all here for you to use for yourself. Again, none of this is required as part of the application, so you're not going to be giving us the budget worksheet. It's just for your use as a tool um, that you can use in perpetuity. You're welcome. Uh, it's nothing fancy, but it, it gets the job done. Uh, all right. Um, Anything else I need to know? Uh, but yeah, one thing that we recommend uh, while Submittable does autosave, uh, you never know. We just encourage you every once in a while, if you're this kind of person, uh, scroll down to the bottom of the application and uh, click save. Save, you know, save the draft every once in a while. It doesn't have to be fair. I mean, that's only if you, you know, if you like living on the edge and you trust Submittable's autosave proce uh, process, like like most autosave programs out there, it autosaves. And so, you know, if you're happy uh, with that, that's totally fine. It's just uh, just an extra bit of caution we, we recommend every once in a while. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, again, uh, it talks about your internet browsers, preferences, your privacy notice again. 
Okay, let's get into this. Here we are. Okay, I'm so super excited. Look at this. We're here. We've got a, we've got a big idea. We've got everything ready for us to be part of this application process. Am I an individual or am I a group? This is a question. And uh, yeah, we'll leave that to you to decide. Um, yeah, individual or community's uh, name. And then uh, we just make sure that you have a contact person that we will be will be the main contact person with us going forward. All your address information, contact information, whether you can receive texts, great, the standard stuff. Okay, and then we enter here into the uh, portion of the format, uh, the how, how the application works. There we go, that's much better worded. Okay, um, so this is the branching option, right? So you've got your two different options. Again, 300 word max, two minute uh, audio or video maximum. So you'll see right here that if it's written, whether you copy paste, write it somewhere else and copy paste it or write directly in here, you're gonna be limited to 300 words. If you click on the audio video format, you will give uh, a website link to where we can go find this. And again, two minutes max, right? So if you give us a five minute video, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. We're only gonna watch two minutes of it. That's all we have time to, to do, sorry. They're just linear time, what a thing. There's just only so many minutes in a day. Uh, and unfortunately, as amazing as I'm sure the final three minutes of that video is, or whatever, how much longer past two minutes, we can only watch two minutes. So I would be really just specific on, or listen to, I should say, I listen to two minutes. Those, those are the two options. Anyhow, you get the idea. Website provided here. If there is a password, um, then we would like you to uh, to post it here. Um, that's just so we can access it, you know? Um, Unfortunately, otherwise we won't be able to access it. And again, because we don't have capacity to come back and tell you, hey, uh, unfortunately, you gave us an amazing link and we're so excited to look at it. Unfortunately, we have no access to it. We can't say that. We just don't have capacity to respond. So please do remember, if it is password protect us, protected, please give us the password so we can see it. All righty. Cool. This is great. Um, I'm enjoying Aren't we having fun? I'm having fun. This is great. Look at this application. Look at all the things we get to do. All right. So here we go. We have got an option breakdown here. This is again how we have talked about. You heard me talk about this before. Remember, remember, in two minutes ago when I did that, or however many minutes ago it was. I don't know time. What is it? Here we go. Uh, exhibition is one option. Event the other. Now you're clicking on these and you're looking around and going, huh? I don't think much has changed. This looks that just this, this this is useless. What what? But look, you'll see something over. There's a little hint that something's changing. See this little scrolly bar over here? I hope you can see it. Uh, boop! It changes. Boop! It changes. Something is happening. What's happening? Well, down in the lower portion of the application, it it's going to change. It's going to change. You'll see a 4A and a 4B. We'll look at that uh, in a minute. Well, now you know what I'm feeling. I'm feeling. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Let's scroll down. Look, it's exhibition. I'm going to scroll down here. Do 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 do. Part two. We're scrolling past work samples. You're getting kind of a preview. Uh, logistics. Here we go. Those areas we talked about. Oh, there we go. Four A exhibitions, and it breaks down to uh, the exhibition portion. Now, if it is an event, yes, you guessed it because you're sharp. You know what's going on. If I click event, boom, the magic of technology events it's different for b this is insane i don't know we can handle it we got this it's changed here we go so there you go and again if you're applying for an exhibition that has an event you're going to select the exhibition option and in the notes you're going to say hey guess what as part of my exhibition i'm also hosting an event now you don't have to if you have an exhibition you don't have to provide an event that may not be part of your vision but if it is that's how we, we recommend you go. Apply for your exhibition. Let us know in the comments, rather the, the notes section, that you are also going to have eventing event activation as part of your exhibition. Again, project title, all this stuff down here. A lot of branching options is really the, the thing I want to point to here, um, along with all the different pieces of the puzzle. All this stuff is here. You get to check it out on your own time. But you'll see if you have any questions about it and it just it feels too zany and you're like, what is going on? I don't really 
I'm not following this, then then we'll be happy to help. But just really, there's two options, written or audio video, as you as you prefer. And again, we, we know there's a lot of there's a lot of words here and some numbers. And sometimes it's a you know, maybe maybe you need to save uh maybe maybe your process is you save after you've done part one, you save, you come back later because you're like, hey, I need to I need to really focus up on all these words and numbers that are here. It's it's a lot. I get it, totally. But really do want you to take some time to look over five minutes. Five minutes is five minutes. Five minutes by the clock. We won't get into the physics of how time differs uh, at different um, speeds and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but let's just assume like five minutes is five minutes, um, you know, like disregarding the speed of light, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we will, what is he talking about? We don't know. I don't know. It's been a long day, hasn't it? Let's not, let's just ignore. Um, what we want to talk about here is five minutes as uh, it applies on your on your clock on your timer, on your stopwatch, uh, here at, at, I guess we're near sea level. Yeah, okay, let's go with that. Um, what you're gonna get is five minutes of review time, no matter if it's 10 images, if it's five pages of written materials, et cetera, et cetera, some combination or a website, just read, just, I just really can't drive that at home enough. I wish, I wish, I know you have created a seven hour opus of pure genius and you're like, but yes, you really need to get to get the full effect of what I'm bringing. You need to watch the whole thing. Wish we could, really wish we could. I'm sorry, we can't. So is there like a key five minutes there that you can kind of, boom, here you go, five minutes. And you know you're gonna wanna see more, so like, let's, let's talk about accepting my application, right? Okay, uh, I'm gonna stop myself here. Um, you got the idea, but look over here. This is where we're going. We're going to the work samples where you're going to upload the work samples, right? And you're going to choose a file. Now, the thing I want to draw your attention to is this acceptable file types. It is not, I will note, every possible acceptable file type in the world. It's just these ones. So please make sure, please make sure that your file fits in one of these file types. Take a look. I'm scrolling my cursor across here to see just to really, just to really help guide your eye. Not doing it well, unfortunately. I guess, yep. Yeah, here we go. Just waving up and down. But I'm gonna do it again. Here we go. I don't know if this is this helping you. I don't know. Hopefully it is. Anyway, this is my my main point, and this is the point I want to drive home. These are the acceptable file formats when you choose a file to submit a work sample file thingy. Great. Moving on. Uh, logistics. What are the creative mediums, right? Now you'll see down here, if there's, if it doesn't fit any of these, you got another option where you can describe. So just in case, don't feel limited. These are, there's, we try to be as broad as possible, but you know, there, there are many things happening out in the world that aren't encapsulated uh, in these boxes, right? These boxes are great in and of themselves. There are so much richness in them, but if yours is something else, we gave you the option. And then what are we looking for as far as uh, support, right, for the exhibitions? And then for tech needs, what do we need? Again, for another option, we provide that for you. And uh, how many participants, okay? And again, uh, for exhibitions, use of the which space, um, if you have another option, okay, this is where you'd say, hey, look, I really need the whole gallery. Look, I've got, I'm bringing, I'm going to do this whole the whole thing, right? That's a, that's a chance for you to describe the other option if that's really something you feel strongly about. Uh, again, we also provide what are the what are the months that are that work for you? Okay, so when when would you be available? Right. So again, um, all the months you'd be available. Advisors are going to take a look at that, right? Um, and no matter which cycle, right? If you're applying in the final cycle for 2024, but you're going to be ready in January 2025, let us know. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, you can you can you can select all that apply, all the months where you'd be available for your your event or exhibition to go in on our calendar. Um, yeah, that's that's we'll stop there on that. Um, and then just sort of any information you can give us about the materials 
that will be part of the space. And then we really love to know how you, how'd you hear about it, right? How'd, how'd that happen? Saving a draft as you go along, maybe you need to step away for a while, come back, spend a few days to really hone it. And then when you're ready, the all important blue apply button. Once you click this, you have applied, it's official. Okay, all right, that's, that's us on submittal. Let's go back, because the fun hasn't ended yet. We're going back. We are going back to where? Back to the slides. Let's do that. There's uh, there's some more stuff there. Okay, we're back. We're back. Here we are. Some of the slides I'll probably skip over because we kind of went over them when I was giving you that whole amazing tutorial. But selection process. Again, as I mentioned, uh, we have a panel of KSS which is King Street Station Advisors, who will review and evaluate your application according to the program criteria, and they recommend applications for acceptance. Again, they both con consider individual applications as well as the overall group um, and seek to assemble sort of multifaceted representation. I'm reading the slide, you get it. It's representations of many artistic mediums and applications, or applicants rather, um, just trying to bring the diversity of passion and interest to our exhibition calendar. So all these things are considered. And again, if for whatever reason you're declined, um, then we will encourage you to, to try again another time. Um, whether it's in the next cycle or next year. Uh, again, your proposal may be accepted for uh, accepted outright. It might be accepted with suggested modifications. It could be grouped and combined with other proposals, and it can be declined. Please allow us up to eight weeks after each deadline, um, and that's already a tall order for us. Unfortunately, just the number of applications, um, it's, it's, it's a lot. So please, uh, we, we ask for your compassion. We ask for your patience. Uh, we are we are working to get back to you from all your hard work that you put into it. We we very much respect it, and we'd like to honor it with as quick a return around as we can in answering um, yay or nay, or what's the old timey version of maybe um, um, with modifications. Um, yeah, I'll get back to you on that one. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's all I'm asking. Please please be patient. Again, we kind of went over the criteria, but again, another review, alignment with mission, public benefit, artistic or cultural contribution, and its viability. Okay, we are in the frequently asked questions portion. So we're, we're coming down the home stretch here and uh, just encourage you to bear with us here. Um, if you have questions that are beyond the scope of these frequently asked questions, invite you to follow up with me. I do have contact information, which I will provide at the end of this slideshow. Again, tips. My general application tips are, do not wait until the last minute. While there is a rolling dead deadline and your work will be considered for the following deadline, um, again, what happens on November 9th, if you, on November 10th, you've applied and uh, then, then there isn't that option, right? Um, so, uh, so yeah, just clarify that it will be considered for the next deadline of the, uh, of the call for 2025, right? Um, so you do have some options, but please get it in early so that you can meet your deadline without any um, freak accidents of nature or technology uh, being an obstacle. So. As someone who has experienced that firsthand and the stress of that and the tragedy of that and the heartbreak of that, I would just like to say from one to another, please, please do your, your future self a solid and get it in on time. That's, 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 that's the main one. Again, the next application tips is just really looking to orient your application to addressing the evaluation criteria, right? Sort of making sure that you're answering those questions uh, and aligning them with the criteria so that you have the best uh, best application to put forth your best proposal. Those are my main ones. Um, and then making sure that your file formats that you're applying adhere to uh, the file, accepted file formats and also are in work, good working condition and pleased that they adhere to the time, that, the review time, right? Again, fine, if you submit something that's 10 minutes long, just understand we can only look at the first five minutes. When will they start taking place? Well, uh, with um, 
what do they say? A bit of luck and a fair wind. They will happen starting January 2025. So this is for exhibitions happening starting in 2025 that will that will run the length of 2025 and spill over a little bit into uh, 2026, so January 2026. Is there time you can visit space and check it out? Why, yes, there is. In general, you can visit the space anytime we are open to the public. What is that time? Again, Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., but also every first Thursday of the month. Every first Thursday, we are open until 8 p.m., so 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Those are generally when we're also having show openings, so feel free to come on in, enjoy a show, a bit of catered hors d'oeuvres, maybe some live music depending on the event, maybe maybe some programming. It could be fun. Um, and uh, and that's when we're open. So you, obviously you're welcome to come in any of those times and have a have a walk around the space. If you'd like to um, schedule some time with me, that's also possible. And um, depending obviously on my availability and my capacity, uh, given given um, yeah those those things, I'm happy to meet with you, answer any questions you might have. And actually, we really do encourage uh, you to come down. There's just something about being if you haven't been in the space. Uh, getting down here, seeing the space itself, just gets the creative juices flowing about what what might be possible uh, and what might not be. So it's just it's it's wonderful to just kind of check it out. Um, our second deadline is indicative of the order your event exhibition will be put out in 2025. No, uh, they're not. Again, that's why we have the option of. Um, Sorry, let me let me read that um, instead of reading it in my head. Are the cycle deadlines indicative of the order your event slash exhibition will be put on the 2025 calendar? No, they are not. So again, you're going to on the application. There's the option for you to select which months you prefer, which months um, work for you, right? To have your work ready, et cetera, et cetera. And we will take that under advisement. Again, it is subject to change. It is subject to, hey, advisors might come back and say, hey, we really love this proposal. Are, are you potentially available in this date otherwise? Right? And then we'll see if we can go from there. If you're not accepted in a certain deadline, are, we, are you permitted to apply again for another 2024 cycle? Yes. And nonprofits accept donations during the event. Unfortunately, no. At this point, no. I'm very sorry. Um, again, we do our best to put interested parties in contact with the artists and arts organizations so that any such donations, purchases might happen away from arts property. But unfortunately, during the course of events happening on the arts property, on city property, um, or at least I'll say office of arts and culture property, that is not uh, possible. Uh, this is sort of I answered before. Uh, if you're applying as a group, should you answer as a group? Just given the word limits, yes. Is there Wi-Fi connectivity available in space? There is. Do we have security personnel to protect any work, um, or do we provide our own? The answer is yes, we do. We have security measures. We have um, security tech. We have a on-duty security guard. Uh, we will, in depending on the size of the event, um, it may be contingent upon uh, the artist to work on purchasing additional security for their event. Um, so far, I've not, that ha so far it's been it's worked out. It's worked out fine. Um, I, I don't think that has been the case. Um, but yeah, that is the long and short on that. As a newer artist, exhibitions and gallery events, whether it be some consultation or light mentorship on feasibility, for example, if you have multiple mediums to consider in the proposal, or should that mostly be defined already in the application? So this is a great question. The answer to that is we don't really have a formal process per se for providing, but we just capacity-wise, we don't have that available at this time. That said, uh, one option might be if you were to schedule time with me to come down um, and meet with me in the space, and uh, we can kind of have an informal discussion on any ideas you might like to throw out. Um, absolutely, that's that's something again contingent on my capacity um, to 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 be able to meet my availability. Rather, um, that's something that we can do. Um, but again, it's not really a formal process. And then, again, just to to remember that as part of your application, you might be accepted, but with 
uh, except, like recommendations for modifications by the advisor group of advisors, and they are uh, a highly highly knowledgeable group that will have uh, recommendations if accepted. Um, that that might that might request they might request uh, modifications, and that would sort of I think be another element of that. Um, so yeah. Okay. For the purposes of uh, any questions you might have beyond those that have been posed in the frequently asked questions sections, anything that has come up for you while re reviewing the application process, uh, or re reviewing this tutorial, or looking through the application itself, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, you'll see my number, 206-684-4186, and you can reach me at james.coley at seattle.gov. And then keep an eye out for additional workshops Again, those are included in the uh, guidelines portion of the um, Arts of King Street Station page or on the submittable page. Uh, there's uh, two more, at least at this point, as the time at time of recording, there are two more workshops coming up for the year. Uh, feel free to sign up for those. You can have a live uh, opportunity to ask me questions there as well. I want to thank you for taking taking some time today to uh, to go over this tutorial. It's been a pleasure and look forward to seeing you at King Street Station in the near future. Thank you so much and have a lovely one.